Hello, welcome. We're live in the Digital DJ Tips studio with me, Phil Morse. If you're looking to improve your DJing, if you're looking to become a better DJ producer, you're in the right place because you're with the biggest DJ school in the world with over 36,000 students. Now, today our topic is not about the gear. It's not about anything you do on your DJ gear at all. Instead, it's about a secret weapon that you can use to get more DJ gigs and to be happier. What am I talking about? Well, DJ etiquette. How you behave as a DJ. Because there's ways to behave in public, do what you want in your bedroom, but there's ways to behave when you're out DJing in public, when you're performing, and there's things that you shouldn't do as well. So today I wanna to look at those. I also wanna give you a simple but crazy tip at the very end, which it's worked for me for a long time, and it's just one of those little things. So why? Well, look, this is basic manners, but also many DJs get this stuff wrong. And if you're new to DJing out and about, then you maybe don't know some of this stuff. You think you're doing the right thing and you're not. For instance, I once thought I was paying tribute to a DJ who was playing after me by playing that DJ's songs. You don't play the songs of the DJ coming next in your set. Uh, so getting this stuff right is gonna to lead to more gigs because people who book DJs, they wanna know that they're booking people that they can trust and that it's easy to work with. One of the big mistakes beginner DJs make is thinking that it's all about the music. Of course, the music's important to us, but not really to the people booking you. What they're more in, 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 involved in is the, this whole idea that, that everything goes off well, that they don't have any dramas that they weren't expecting, and that the people they're working with get on with each other and don't cause any problems and so on. And being professional, having your manners, getting DJ etiquette right is important. So we're gonna to talk today about not only the way to treat everyone around you when you're DJing, the crowd, the other co-DJs and co-workers and so on, but also just some general rules about competency that, that don't have everything to do with the music that you play, although the music is important, of course, we know that, but just it's not as important as you think when you're trying to get gigs and when you're trying to get booked. So as ever, because this is a live show, if you're lucky enough to be watching us live on YouTube, Twitch, or on Facebook, then you can ask questions at the end. But even if you're not, you're most likely to be watching the recording of this, because most people, that's where they find this stuff. Then you can still ask questions. My team and I are ready to help you. Just ask in the comments underneath wherever you're watching this. You could be watching it on digitaldjtips.com, our website. You could be watching it on the YouTube or the Facebook replay. Ask your questions and we'll get to you. At the end of today's show though, we're gonna hand over to you guys and girls watching live and we will take some of your questions. Share with me your the worst behavior you've seen DJs making, or if you're very brave, the worst behavior you've made. And also share with me the things that matter to you when you're working with, with other DJs and things that impress you and things that you think are important about DJ behavior. Right, so we've got a whole load of things. I've actually listed 10 things that I wanna go through with you. So we're gonna do that to start off with now. Uh, as ever, we've been logged out of our chat, which is really annoying because this has been doing it every week now. I get to the chat, um, I get to the chat, thing, whatever you call it, app, uh, and uh, it's all working. We go live and it logs me out. So I don't know why that's happened, but don't worry if you're chatting away to us. As soon as I log in again, it'll give me all the chats that I've missed. So do keep uh, typing away in the chat box if you'd like to chat to us today about these things that uh, we're talking about, our 10. I've picked 10 anyway, things to help you become a better DJ uh, by behaving better, frankly. Uh, so let's get started. And number one then, uh, it's, oh, by the way, there's an article coming up with all this stuff in, so uh, you will be able to read about this on the website as well. Uh, but for now, though, uh, we're going to just talk about it first and get your opinions as well, which is the interesting thing, getting your opinions. It helps the articles be better. So there you go. Uh, right, okay, we are finally live and your chat is coming through, which is great. So the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to DJ etiquette is that remember... When you turn up to play a DJ gig, right, just remember that you're working because you've got a job to do, but so is everyone else. And so in that event, in that room, wherever it is that you are DJing, yes, you are excited. Yes, you're gonna be playing music. Yes, it's cool. But ultimately you're doing a job. And the idea is that you do your job with the least drama and the least hassle to anyone else because everyone else is trying to do their job as well. 
And look, the way this works is that for people to turn up, for people to have fun, for people to enjoy being there and let their hair down. In other words, for the people who have come to pay money, which is your wages, for them to have a good time, you have got to do your job properly. And that means drama free. That means being uh, professional about everything that you do. That means being friendly and approachable and all the things we're about to talk about. But if you can just bear in mind, and also actually it helps you to have, get respect from other people because if, as soon as you understand you're doing a job, you're gonna be requesting certain things from everyone else. Like leave me alone in my space to do my work. Don't, you know, so you can be very, uh, polite, but also insistent that this is my workplace. I need to need to do my job here. And you're going to see in some of the things that we're about to talk about that that is something that comes up. You know that y the DJ booth is a workplace, not only for you but for all the other DJs working there. So just remember, number one, when it comes to this whole thing, is that you are doing a job, uh, and therefore uh, behave in a professional manner that befits doing a job. But number two, that said, remember how lucky you are that your job is the DJ. Because there's people in there who know that their job isn't as good as yours. Everyone. Everyone, from the doorman to the toilet attendant to the bar staff, they all know you've got the best job. You know, the question people always say to me is, should I play to the other DJs in the room or should I play to the crowd? It's a different question, right? It's different to DJ etiquette different to manners. But my response to that is always, you should play to the crowd because not only are they paying your wages, but the very best that can happen if you try and play to the other DJs is that they think, I wish I was doing that person's job even more now because they're, the crowd are loving it and I wish I was them. So you can't impress other DJs in a room. All you can do is get them wishing that they were in your shoes, right? So. The point is you've got the best job. And so if you want to behave professionally, if you want to keep your manners good, if you want to get more gigs, because as we're going to talk about towards the end, this is the way to do it, one of the way, big ways of doing it, then realize that, that, that your job is the best job in the room and be humble to everyone else and make sure you show respect to everyone else because ultimately they are the ones allowing you to do your job. You can't be the DJ, you can't lead the party without everyone else in that building and in that venue doing their job properly and they're not enjoying their job as much as you potentially are gonna enjoy yours. We'll get on to talking a little bit more about that next because the next thing is, and this is where it starts to get interesting, only you know how stressful being a DJ is. Well, I know it too. We know that, right? We know the nerves, the horrible nerves, the existential angst and confidence problems you go through, sometimes before every DJ gig, thinking if anyone walks up to me and says, what are you doing? You can't DJ. I'll just shrivel and die. Thinking I, I'm not, this has all been a stupid mistake. I'm not good enough for this. Thinking I just want this to be over. This is horrible. Uh, you know, we've all felt it and we all know it disappears hopefully after half an hour of playing when things are starting to go well. But only we know it, no one else knows that. So here's the problem. You turn up at a venue, ready to play a set, you're feeling really, really nervous, your stomach's fluttering, you, 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 know, you, haven't, you didn't sleep well the night before, you haven't been able to talk to anyone for the last two or three hours, you're, you're utterly nervous about playing a DJ gig, right? And you turn up, what's gonna show on your face? It ain't gonna be bubbly, smiley, friendly with everyone, being humble and considerate and respectful to the toilet attendant and the bar staff and so on. Of course it's not. It's gonna be probably gray and ashen and I just want this to be over, just want this to be over, hiding in the corner, you know. But that comes across as arrogant and that comes across as standoffish and you don't want that. And if you thought that that was the case for a second, you, you wouldn't do it, but that's how it works. So you have to not let the stress show. That's my third point of DJ manners. Even though you don't feel it inside, it doesn't cost anything to smile at people, it doesn't cost anything to take a deep breath, look people in the eye, say hello, ask their names, and just generally be friendly because you're doing the best job in the place, remember. That's all anyone else thinks. So why would you be anything other than humble and friendly and smiley and, and considerate and all those things? Even though you don't feel it, fake it. It's one time when it's okay to fake it. No one knows how you feel inside, only you. So don't let the stress show. Uh, number four, 
please, in the comments, I want your chat about this. Number four, be a saintly diplomat with people giving you requests. Be a saint-like diplomat with people giving you requests. We've done whole live shows about this very topic. We've written whole articles. Damn, I've, I've taught whole lessons in our courses about dealing with requests. It is, to many DJs, the bane of their existence. To some, probably more enlightened DJs, it actually can be helpful. But the point is, you should never ever be anything other than completely friendly and diplomatic to anyone asking you for requests. You've probably seen that meme, right, of the DJ DJing and the girls come up to ask something and he's literally got his hand in her face. It's funny, right, because, you know, the lizard brain goes, yeah, yeah, you know, I know, I know where they're coming from. But honestly, I remember I was DJing once with my friend uh, who I will remain nameless, but someone I have a lot of respect for. And um, he was, he's a very good DJ, and he was playing in a small venue where everyone's on top of you, like kind of boiler room-ish, right? You've seen those boiler room videos where everyone's surrounding you and on top of you. It wasn't quite that bad, but it's pretty close. People could stand like, like where I'm stood here on this desk, and he was DJing there, right? So you could literally lean in and touch heads if you wanted. And um, he, I was stood there watching him, sipping my drink, just passing the time, and he, uh, was asked something by someone and he really kicked off. He really started shouting at them, his face is screwed up. And I was utterly shocked. Not really utterly shocked by the fact that this was happening, but it was him doing it. Because my impression of him had always been totally on top of everything, great DJ, everyone's friend, etc., etc. Now, obviously that day, something had been boiling up inside of him and, and it all came out with that poor person coming up. I don't know what they said or whatever. But the fact is, everyone's looking at you thinking they're having a great time. You're leading the party. The DJ is having a good time and therefore I'm allowed to have a good time as well. So if you show that you're not, it doesn't matter how much you're being goaded, it doesn't matter how much you're being figuratively poked by people saying stupid things to you like, can you play something we can dance to? Or can you play it now because we're going soon? Or it's my girlfriend's birthday and so she sent me over to ask this. Or uh, they asked you for something you've already played like five minutes ago. You know, we've all been there, we've all heard these things, but the point is these people are paying your salaries. They're paying your money. That cash that you walk away with at the end of the night comes from them. And they, to them, this really matters. To them, they don't know that you're you know, their request number 28 of the last 10 minutes. They just know that they want a tune, they've come up to ask for it. Quite a lot of the time, people will be really enjoying themselves and they'll think, wow, this is so good, but if they played this, it'll be even better. So they're, they're already thinking really highly of you when they come to speak to you. And a lot of the time, they might have spent a long time working up the nerves to come, you know, working past the nerves and working up to come and even talk to you because they, they think you're up on a pedestal. And if you're anything other than polite to them, it's a big mistake. So although it's hard, be a saintly diplomat when it comes to requesters. As I say, there's an article coming up with all this stuff in. We're talking about the 10 tips from Digital DJ Tips DJ School on DJ etiquette. Uh, and the whole premise here is that if you get these right, you get more gigs because people like DJs that get this stuff right. It's just as important as the music you play. Um, so number five, be a can-do person. So this one comes from Jason Janai, who's one of the top wedding DJs in New Jersey over there, stateside. And Jason puts a lot of uh, value on always having everything people could possibly want with him when he goes to DJ. Leads, adapters, antacids, painkillers, uh, you know, um, uh, spare towels, spare t-shirts. He has everything. And if he sees any DJ or any member of staff or any person in his crew that's got problems, spilled a drink down themselves, can't get their headphone adapter to work, broken their headphones, uh, got a headache, you know, thirsty, can't get a drink, the bar's packed, he's got it all. He's got all the solutions in that big bag he bought in, on his back as well as his, uh, as well as his headphones. And he's the first person to jump in and help. Why does he do this? because he's a nice guy, but also because he realizes that if you help your fellow DJs and your fellow workmates and everyone around you, they will remember it. Not only will they help you when you need help, but they'll know you're a nice person to work with and they'll remember you for it. And so jumping in and giving something, some, someone something they need before they even know they need it maybe, 
like a towel because you can see that they're sweating and they're, they're you know, they're, they're, they're not prepared. All this stuff gets remembered. So just be a can do DJ. So the next one is to do with, I call it the Beyonce effect. You book Beyonce to come and play a gig in your venue, lucky you, got a lot of money. You don't expect her to turn up, you know, with a bus ticket in her hand, with a microphone and sparkly stuff in a bag over her shoulder. Hello, I'm here to do your PA tonight. Of course you don't. Beyonce turns up on a private jet with an entourage of 40 people, right? Not only to put the show on, but because that's who she is. However, that's not you. You are not Beyonce. When you're booked to play a DJ gig, you turn up on your own, or the very most with the person you need, your videographer or whoever, and that person's working as well as you are. You don't turn up with your other half, with your best friends. You don't have a big guest list where you can let in as many people as you want. And you certainly don't all, let all those people pile in to the DJ booth with you. It's unprofessional, it won't be expected by the person booking you, and it won't be appreciated. And so if you do want to bring other people with you, let's say you're in a different city to normal, you've been booked to play somewhere different, and your partner has traveled with you, then that's fine, but just clear it with the people who booked you first, and don't have hangers on, including your partner or whoever, in the DJ booth when you're working. It's not professional, it won't be appreciated by other DJs, and unless you're very sure about this stuff, it's just best to avoid it. So you're not Beyonce, your mates haven't been booked, it's you that's been booked. Don't take liberties. Again, it's not so much that you'll be remembered for not doing this, but you'll certainly be remembered badly if you do do this. So the next one is, this should have been number one really, but uh, this is just the way they came out when we were brainstorming today's lesson. Um, get the basic professional stuff right. In other words, be competent. So if you're booked to play a gig, James Hype, one of our tutors, says he always pre-reads his crowd. He pre-reads his crowd. How does he does that? How does he do that? Well, when he's playing in a venue in a city he doesn't know or a venue he doesn't know, he gets on Instagram, he gets on socials, and he looks at the venue, at their feeds. He looks at the feeds of DJs who've played there in the last few days or this, this time last week or whatever. He looks at mentions of that venue and he looks at what clubbers are posting. He watches the video clips. He gets on to Shazam, which has city genre charts on its website. So you can see what music is being shazammed in the city you're gonna be playing in. And he puts all this stuff together to pre-read the crowd. So he knows what to expect when he turns up there. That's basic professionalism. It's having all your itinerary sorted out so that you know you're gonna be there on time and you've got a plan B if there's a problem with your transport and so on. It is turning up on time. It's doing all the, th and then of course doing a decent job, being prepared for the gig. It's doing all the things that mean that you perform your job without any extra drama for the person booking you. So getting the professional basics right is so important. And I count etiquette as one of the basics. There's no point getting all that stuff right and then being a real pain to work with, right? So, but get the, get the, get the competency stuff right. Get the stuff that you're expected to do right um, without even a mention. Um, so the ninth thing I want to cover, there's two more left, uh, stick to your DJ set times. So if you're booked to play a certain time, then stick to it. Now obviously if you start late, you check whether you're gonna be ending correspondingly late or what the deal is. Uh, and don't pester the other DJs when they're playing. Don't overplay your mark, don't pester other DJs when they're playing. Expect to be playing at your agreed time and expect to finish at your agreed time unless everyone agrees differently for whatever reason, things do change. Uh, but leave people alone, you know, so play your set at the time you're there and get out of the face of other DJs when you're not needed. Uh, and be very considerate when you're switching DJ sets as well. You know, just ask people what they want, best way of doing this, uh, and uh, listen to what they say and try and figure out the most painless way of switching over. Obviously, DJ switchovers are a big flashpoint when it comes to this stuff. Uh, and my final point, and this comes from years of DJing in venues everywhere, being a promoter, also being a DJ, so I've seen both sides of this. Save any battles till afterwards. There is no point starting to argue if you don't like the way things are happening at the time, most of the time. So 
this is generally if you ever want to play in that venue again. If you don't, let's say you turned up to play a venue and everything's going wrong and you just want to, you don't care, you're not going to play there again, um, you're going to put your foot down and shout a bit. Well, that's your call, but don't expect to play that venue again. If it gets you the gig you want, if it gets you the peak time, if it gets that other DJ you don't like out of the DJ booth, if that's the kind of person you are, if you think it's worth it, be my guest, go for it. But if you ever want to play somewhere again, the best thing you can do when things aren't going according to plan, it could be other DJs overstepping the mark, it could be someone else being unprofessional, it could be something you feel is unfair, it could be the way that the crowd are behaving and you think the door staff should have done a better job with them, it could be the fact you can't get a drink and you, you feel it's impacting your behaviour because the place is too busy. Deal with it and deal with it in a way that doesn't impact other people, as in other workers, DJs or people working the venue. But don't leave it. Raise it afterwards. If you talk in the almost cold light of day after something is disagreeable to you or something that you think, I, I can't put up with this. If I play here again, that needs to be different. Then taking the time to think it through, taking the time to calm down and waiting until the, the, the stress is off, waiting until the part is over and everyone's had time to take a deep breath, is the right time to talk about this stuff. You will be respected for talking about it and you'll be appreciated for not kicking off when no one was in a position to really do anything about it or help you. So disagreements aren't always 100% right, 0% wrong. You know, it's not always, in fact, it's never that black and white. There's always some nuance, there's always some, yeah, but you didn't understand this, yeah, but and as soon as you're starting to use, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, that is not a performance conversation to have. So leave it till afterwards and you'll get better results, you'll get listened to more, or you might actually think, I was being a bit stupid there and actually this isn't even worth raising and save yourself a bit of embarrassment. So we, uh, we can sum this up really in two sides, the personal side and the professional side. The personal side is, this is like the people skills, as long as you remember to stay polite and humble and show respect for other people, basically to treat people as you want to be treated, you'll, you'll be there or thereabouts, right? Um, and on the professional side of it, being on time, being organised, being prepared, pre-reading your crowd if it's a new venue, and being competent, all those things count. But they count over and above the genres of music you happen to be playing or not playing. That, that counts as competency because you should know that stuff. But DJs who say, well, you know, I play deep tech house and I'm great at it, so you should see that brilliance and book me again. I'm missing all these things, right? The venue owner doesn't really care as long as the music's roughly what he or she thinks it should be, etc. I'm not saying music's not important, I'm just saying that music and mixing are no good if you get everything else wrong. This is all stuff you can get right without playing a note. Um, the truth is that DJs are only ever booked by people they know and like and people who know and like them. It's a people thing, it's a people relationship thing. If people know they're going to enjoy DJing with you, whether it's other DJs or club managers or promoters or whatever, they'll book you and they'll likely ask for you by name. Your name will come up in conversation when you're not there. Your good manners will be working for you, which is a great thing. Right, so before we talk about DJ etiquette, good behaviour, bad behaviour, and I can't wait, I just want to share one more thing with you and it is a stupidly simple tip and it comes from a point of being really, really bad at this myself. I really struggle with remembering people's names. I can look someone in the face and not really see them, and they can tell me their name and I've forgotten it before it's even finished coming out of their mouth. I'm absolutely terrible at it. I don't know if it's nerves, I don't know if it's because I've always got 10 things going around in my head, I don't know if it's just that everything moves so quickly and I'm not taking time to let things sink in, but here's the thing, the most important word in anyone's life is their own name. So if you can remember everyone's name, you really are a cut above most people. So what I do is I do two things. I look people in the eye when I ask them their name and I repeat it back at them. And saying their name allows it to sink into my head. So if someone says, hello, I'm, my name's David, I say, well, lovely to meet you, David looking them in the eye. And at that point, we finish our conversation, I know that because I've actually said their name back to them, I will remember doing that straight afterwards and I'll, I'll, I'll still have their name in my head. Battle number one, because believe me, otherwise I forget it. Terrible, I know, but that's, knowing yourself is half the battle. 
And the second thing I do is get my phone out and scribble it down. I've got a list of names and I'm unapologetic about that because it gives me a better chance of remembering that person. So if you are like me, if you struggle to remember names, look the person in the eye, repeat their name back at them. By the way, that can help if it's an unusual name and then write it down as soon as you get a second. So that's all I've got for you today on DJ Etiquette. Uh, what do you think though? I'm going to now spend a few minutes talking to our fantastic audience, many of whom are here with us live. However, I've been logged out again from the chat. This is absolutely terrible. I need to have a word with them about this. Uh, I'll log in again. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, do let me know uh, in the comments. We're, we've got them all coming in here from Twitch, YouTube and from, uh, and from Facebook. So uh, meanwhile, I'm just going to dial up my chat box again. It will only take me a second. It's annoying though. I don't know why I keep getting uh, logged out, I have to say. It doesn't make any sense to me. But there you go. Such is life when you're doing live streams. Things change. Uh, right, chat box, here we go. There it is. Oh no, that's the team. Sorry about this, people. Unusual that this would happen, but uh, I'm going to uh, just deal with it as we do. Deal with things as they come along. Um, and share your worst DJ behavior as well. I want to know things that people have done that have really annoyed you, or even if you want to be very brave, things you've done that you wish you hadn't. Uh, that might be fun for us to talk about now. Uh, so while I'm just quickly getting the chat back online, uh, do that, share that with me. Uh, right, okay. Password cut and pasted, email address typed in. Of course, I bet they're not all here now for me, are they? And it's making me click on boxes with motorcycles in, which is extremely exciting for me. Ah, oh, they are all here, that's good. Good. Right, hello, Jason, uh, who says, I'm just fine that being friendly and approachable is a huge plus. If I wasn't, uh, I would have had the honor of meeting the creator of, I wouldn't have had the honor, oh wow, this is uh, old school, meeting the creator of the absolute banger, Edge One Compounded, on the little old Isles of Silly, uh, where I played it at the end of the night. Right, guys and girls, if you're into old school, hard, European house music, get on YouTube and type in Edge One, E-D-G-E -E space one. The song is called Compounded, and it's like the word compounded, but without the O-U in it. Um, it's a cracker, it's a belter. One of my favorites, Jason. Uh, but yeah, Jason, being friendly and approachable, I agree completely. Uh, don't turn up and try to shoehorn your own gear into the booth. Always try to prep for the gear that's already in place, especially when playing with others. Or make sure that it's okay for you to bring your own gear. And that's all about preparation. I completely agree with you there, Stu. Hello, Benny, one of our best students in the house today. DJ A.D. Foster and Pepe as well. Hello, Ruckus. Uh, Jason says, just being friendly and approachable is really important because if I, oh no, sorry, you've already, you've already um, cut and pasted that one twice. Uh, you probably thought I'd lost it, which was quite reasonable, seeing that I probably did. Um, half the crowd are amateur DJs nowadays, says you don't like my music. We were talking about how um, you should play to the crowd and not the DJs. Yes, half the crowd are. What do you feel about crate crashes, says Keith? So this is people who come in and say, can I look through all your music? Uh, so it's up to you to stop that happening. Design that out. Um, so you could, there's loads of ways you can do it. You can, you can limit access to where you are. You can have your computer way away from where the public can get to. Uh, you can politely say, uh, sorry, I've, my, my, so, sorry I, don't, I only have the tunes I'm playing. Um, there's lots of ways. Think about it in advance, but I don't ever, ever let anyone just sit and look through my music. It's, uh, it's overstepping the mark. And as long as you can tell people politely that, then, um, then you're good to go. So Fran, Franz, sorry, says, uh, my number one as a mobile DJ, uh, my number one, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's truth, truth will do. My number one task maybe, uh, is that it's my job to give the host his or her best party ever. I go to a lot of parties and my best party might be a lot different to theirs and that's what they pay me for. Uh, so this is basic professionalism as a mobile DJ. It's about them, not about you. Totally agree, Franz. DJ A.D. Foster says smiling is key. You know, we were talking about how when you're very nervous, it's, it's easy to kind of like, everything about you is rigid and your face is 
grey and oh, I don't want to be here, I don't want to be here, please, 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 someone help me, no one's going to help me. Ah, oh, that's not a smile. Uh, smiling is definitely key. Uh, faking it until you're finally enjoying yourself at some point, which normally happens, uh, is definitely important. Thank you for that, DJ A.D. Foster. Uh, the Ruckus says, I'm more, ner I love this, I'm more nervous getting ready to record myself uh, than when I play in front of a crowd. Interesting. What I recommend there is just hit record every time you turn your DJ gear on. Just leave it playing, literally. Hard drives are cheap nowadays. As soon as you turn your DJ gear on, hit record. Then you're always recording yourself. A red carpet isn't a red carpet if you roll it out every time. Do that, that might get you over your nerves of, uh, of, of, of um, recording your sets. Anyway, um, so never stress or panic if the dance floor is quiet the first 30, 60 minutes, says Mark. Uh, it's a good point. Kill them with kindness, that's a good one. Uh, I like the third point. I'm always worried about what may go wrong instead of enjoying the moment. This is talking about, uh, about uh, hiding your nerves, isn't it? Um, so thank you for that. Um, DJ Bally B on YouTube. So um, this one is from Don, who says, I'm just coming off a huge battle with burnout. Burnout's real, Don. Uh, producing two orchestras through COVID and two new CEOs while still doing a full summer of wedding DJing. Uh, take time off, folks. Need time to recharge. It's true. If you feel yourself getting natty, if you feel yourself getting ill-tempered and irritable with your crowds, it may be that you are just burning out a bit and need a bit of rest. Um, so thanks for that. Um, I hate requests, says about half of the chat. Um, but however, 99% of the time, it is essentially someone telling you to change the music policy to whatever their personal taste is. I'm not sure about that, Stu. I think it, there's a sliding scale of requests. Now, the requests for me go from girls who are dancing all the way down to the single boy in the 1970s progressive rock t-shirt who comes up to you and asks you to play a Led Zeppelin B-side. These are not the same person. So if you've got a, an enthusiastic bunch of girls who are leading your dance floor and one of them comes up and says, politely, please can you play this? You probably were gonna play it anyway because they're completely clued into what you're doing. And if not, it's probably a really good idea. If you've got the guy who's just crawled out of the tables in the corner to request the most obscure Led Zepp song they can think of, they've probably been sat there with the other person who hasn't danced all night saying, well, I bet the DJ hasn't got this. They don't understand dancing, they don't understand DJing, they don't understand keeping people happy. They might not be there to sabotage you, but they just want to hear something that will maybe cheer them up. But you don't want to be listening to those people. So I think there's a difference. You know, not all requesters are the same, but I do get what you're saying. Um, you don't like my music, says no one likes a big ego. Isn't that true? Neil says, I'm going uh, for a holiday to Thailand. Any advice how to tap gigs? Totally different conversation, Neil. But it does bring me into uh, something very important. If you want to ask questions about your DJing, if you've got challenges, if you've got anything you're stuck with, do come and join us on our other show, which is live every Thursday in school term time, uh, at 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we call it Thursday Q&A Live, and we will answer any questions. So pop back then, and I'll help you with that straight away, Neil. Um, Rabit just says, hello, from Colorado. Hello to you too, Rabit. Uh, and hello to Don, who says, requests are awesome. It helps you to know your client better. Indeed, it does. So thanks for that. So today, folks, we've been talking about DJ etiquette, the simple thing you can do, which will basically get you more gigs because you'll be a likable person that people want to work with. Before you've even played a note, before you've even powered up your gear, this is the kind of thing that will help you get those gigs and show off what you can do. In other words, if you don't do this stuff, you might just find that there's less demand for your services and you don't get a chance to show off your music and show off your mixing and all the other stuff that uh, has got you into DJing in the first place. There will be an article and if you're watching this video embedded in an article, hey, it's already been published, but if not, keep an eye out on Digital DJ Tips website for that article. Uh, go to digitaldjtips.com, and when you get there, uh, I will show you. Why don't, we, why don't we have a look together? When you get to digitaldjtips.com, uh, go to the top and click on the blog, and you'll find all our latest stuff there. 
Uh, and this week, as we record this, there's a lot going on. Ableton has launched a standalone push controller, which is pretty uh, exciting. It's also modular, which I think is great. We've been talking about DJing on standalone gear without having to export to a USB drive. Uh, we've been talking about turntables this week. Uh, so all this great content is over on Digital DJ Tips. Just if you do come over, click that join button. It will give you access to the Tuesday email that we send out every week. A seven minute read that will help you become a better DJ. And to say thank you for joining, we'll give you a copy of our book, the best-selling book on Amazon, uh, Rock the Dance Floor on How to DJ. So head over to Digital DJ Tips, join if you're not a member, check our content out and look out for the articles supporting this video. But meanwhile, from me in the studio, get good, get out there, make the moments. I'll see you very soon. Till next time, bye-bye.